Hello, Drone Racers. I'm Mark, and today on Drone Racer 101, we're going to take a look at one of the coolest Lua scripts I've ever seen. If you have an XLI or a QX7, you definitely need this. See that? No? Okay, maybe we'll go to the bench. So I'm going to start by showing you the Lua script and what it does, and then I'll show you how to get it yourself and set it up so it works for your radio. So to activate a Lua script, we'll hold down, and there it is. So right now there's very basic information. We do not have a radio powered on, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn a radio on. So there, now it's on, and we have full telemetry. I'm using the Helifar Futon 2 for this. It comes with an XSR receiver with telemetry all set up, so it makes it really easy for this one. So what's great about this is here on this one screen, going around the horn, we have the battery percentage of the radio. So this is how the batteries are in the radio, the name of the model, the current time, we have the RSSI value of the connection, both in a digital form and in a graphical form. We have the flight time built in here. We have our current flight mode. I'm currently in acro mode. The voltage of the battery. So this is the voltage of an individual cell, both in the digital form and then in a graphical form. So I just have a storage voltage battery here that I've been using with. It's down just a little bit, but it works. So I have the props taken off right now. So we'll take a look at the voltage here if I arm it and then turn up the throttle a little bit. We'll see the voltage go down. So it stays live. It's actually reading that directly from the flight controller. So then if I arm the quad, it shows that it's armed. Look at that, it's a graphic and shows that it's armed. So then if I change my flight modes, we have acro. We'll turn it off so it stops beeping at us. So I have acro, horizon, and air mode. So it's great, so at a glance, I can tell what flight mode I'm in. So if I wanna take off an acro, or if I wanna take off an air mode, I can do that. Now this setting, it's not actually reading from the flight controller, same for armed. It's not actually reading that from the flight controller. It doesn't know that information. So if you want to use this and you don't use the same switches that this Lua strip comes with by default, it's actually really easy to edit. So there are several ways you can do this. It's a very customizable interface. So what I might change it to next time is show my VBAT, my total cell voltage here, and then a digital graph here of the individual cells but you have to figure out how to do that. First, you need to know which switch is which. So I'm gonna show you here. This is SA, SB, SC, and SD. I actually had to look this up because normally when I'm setting up the radio, I just flip it and I don't pay any attention to which one it is. But for programming in the Lua script, you're gonna to wanna to know that A, B, C, D. You also need to know where you're getting your battery voltage for. You do require telemetry for this. I'm gonna push right and then left twice to go to the telemetry page. I have discovered sensors on this, so I have all telemetry working. So I have a couple I'm gonna look at here, mainly A4 and VFAS. VFAS is just your battery's raw voltage. For a 4S LiPo, this is the voltage combined for the LiPo itself. A4 is basically that divided by four. So that's the average cell voltage of a 4S battery, and it's calculated. So that's what I wanna see most of the time because I don't wanna to have to remember what the voltage maximums and minimums are for different batteries and different cell sizes. I want the average, so that's what I use. But if you want to use VFAS, and you can use some combination of that, this is where you make sure for your radio that that's what it shows. VFAS is gonna be pretty consistent through ever. A4 might vary a little bit depending on your radio. I'm running OpenTX223 right now, so if you don't see A4 settings, for example, you may need to upgrade your radio in order to get that. So here's where you get the Lua script. I'll link this down below so you can get to it easy. And you can also see the creator here, Andrew Farley. Thank you, Andrew, for creating this. I actually found this on Facebook on the x -Lite group. It's a pretty good group of guys there. So if you have questions, it's a good place to ask. And he created this and posted this there a couple months ago, actually. So once you're here, you don't want to copy and paste this. That doesn't work very well. You want to go here to raw, right click, save link as or save desktop or save file or whatever your browser says. So I'm gonna do save link as and I've got a spot and I'm gonna save it to my desktop. So here I'm just gonna save and this is the farl.lua. So then now that I have this, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to open this with Notepad++. This is a free program. If you don't have it, I highly recommend it. It will make editing things like this much, much easier. So we're gonna open it and here is the Lua script. So there are a couple things that we wanna look for. There are a whole bunch of variables here. We can change voltages for the radio. 
So I'm not gonna cover every variable in here. I'm gonna show you the ones that were relevant for me and it's probably gonna be the same for a lot of you that you need to just make some little tweaks in order to make it show up right. So I'm gonna go down to line 400. So right here is where the variables are collected. So we have a couple things, get RSSI, that's probably gonna be the same. And the timer values, this may be one you wanna change. Get TX voltage, that's probably gonna see the same. So here's the two that I need to change. The armed and mode switch. So armed, I use as my back left switch, which we saw was SC. And then our mode switch, I use SA. So we have SC and SA, those are my armed and mode switches. So next thing we wanna do is collect the voltage information. So we have a couple things here. We have local voltage, VFAS. This is the one that showed on the bottom in the middle. So I might leave this one. I changed mine to A4, but I might leave that one. We have a separate spot where we do the drawing of the data. So we have local voltage, get value, VFAS here. And this one I'm going to change to A4. That way the average voltage on the left will be drawn, but the total voltage will be shown because we left the value here on the bottom. After you make these changes, save this file and then we're gonna copy it to our radio. So in this case for me, it's usually easiest for me to pull the card out and slip it into my computer because I have a little adapter here. There it is, so I just connect that in. You can also plug the radio directly into your computer if that's easier for you. So then now on your SD card, what you wanna do is go to scripts and telemetry and paste that file here. Then just pop your card back in your radio and you're ready to go. Now when you do this, again, make sure you get it lined up right because that's one thing with the X-Lite radios, it is just a little tricky to get right. So now that you have the files on the SD card, you need to activate them. The reason we put them in that telemetry screen is so we can hold right, click left, go to the display page, go down to screen one or pick an open screen, go over to script and exit, go over and click and it will give you, I have Betaflight, which I've loaded in a separate video. Uh, there should be a link up there in the corner somewhere. Or the new one that I'm gonna pick is Farl. So I choose that, then I can exit here. Now just hold down and it will activate that script automatically. There and ready to go. So that's gonna be the end of this video. If you found this video useful, leave a like and a comment down below. Thank you very much to Andrew Farley for making this Lewis script. I've been looking for something like this since this radio came out. One of the disadvantages of this radio over the X9D was not being able to see all of my telemetry, and this really fixes that. It makes it far better than I ever expected. So until next time, remember, I didn't realize how many drones I'd broken in the process of testing and trying things until I tried to find one with working telemetry. It was a little more difficult than I thought. You'd think with enough of them over there, uh, one of them would work, but they're mostly show at this point.